a good place to go for the Golden Eagles. So a good start for Marquette, who has struggled to get off to good starts in their last couple of games as Champagny settles down St. John's with their first ball. So a good start for St. John's, and it continues. Champagny, his second three, and it's an eight-point lead. Injury. Step back three, and that one in and out. St. John's, though, those six, Kowski said he doesn't get enough credit for being one of the best defenders, not only in the conference, but in the country. And number two all time in Marquette history and block shots. But no one's blocking that one. Josh Roberts right to the rim on a base. Top of the arc, Kobe McEwen can't find the range. Great bounce pass inside, but then a block recovering Garcia and John got hands on it. And he leaves it for an open look. Cole can't knock it down. Another offensive board. Rasheem Dunn out to Julian Champagny. And he has a bad miss as well, but the possession stays alive. Champagny, leaner. Yes, rattles down. So I just think Champagny's got an advantage. Aggressive. And Cardinals, I think, got a scoring mentality, but he's trying to balance running the team with also scoring the ball. Bucket on the answer of the free throws by Julian Champagny. I mean, Carter's not saying he can't be aggressive, but make sure you're taking the right ones. Driving baseline, Champagny. Offensive rebound following up his own miss. What a play from Champagny. Here's Posh Alexander. One of those bright youngsters, the freshman from Brooklyn. Over on the wing, another one drops. Champagny is catching fire. He's got that's way if they're going to get back into this game. Champagny just inside the arc. No. And a rebound comes down to Carton. He pushes. Champagny's been quiet in this half. Here he is. Well, right on cue. Don't you love it when all the stars align for you, Nick? Great look. You know, Carton only 30% this year from three. At Ohio State last year, he was above 40%. Steve Wojciechowski says he knows that he can shoot it better. It's Theo Johnson. Oh, playing through their inside paint. Six foot 11 center. Getting it from full. Six foot 10. The length of the Wolverines has led them. Leading score in the Big East, 20 per game. Step back, silky smooth. Well, that's what he's really improved on is that step back and that paint, a little horns action, which is a nice NBA set that Utah Valley runs. Here come the Wolverines again. They've got a four on two. Alexander comes up with the steal now. Champagny unable to convert. Nice job by Cole hustling back. He made Champagny this season. Most in college basketball as Woodbury hits it. Champagny, quick answer. And that's their early offense there in St. John's getting the ball. And here's Utah Valley changing their defense. They're in the 2 3 zone here. And nice job attacking the zone by getting it into the middle of that high post a little high low action and you know, st john's this is a small team relatively speaking you know josh roberts the biggest player at 6 8 but now amac with the rebound he's already got and champagne back in for the red storm injured his right eye late in the first half but training staff working Job by Utah Valley getting back in transition. Champagny and the foul. And you like the fact that Champagny didn't settle for the jump. Champagny. Well, Champagny has got that look in his eye that he's. Champagny. Crossover. Julian Champagny up and under. Woodbury did just enough defensively. Yeah, that would have been. Champagny pulls. 
10 hits. Julian Champagny up to 17. What Champagny's doing? Utah Valley just six of 11 from the free throw line. Champagny a step back. Julian Champagny is in microwave mode. Yeah, he is, and you know, he's coming. Kept it away by Champagny. That's it! Off the block, Champagny. A nice core to build around. Mark Manson telling us earlier this week it makes it easier when you have that core and they play together. So Roberts puts that back in for this Utah Valley. They got better today. You know, they got better as they get ready for their next game. DePaul, they've seen, they've seen multiple guys kind of come out of their slumps. Most important. And Pasha Alexander able to track it down. Champagny steps into a three. And the rebound is grabbed by Gillespie. Champagny puts one up and off the mark once again. The more Villanova's able to make Slater again! Back to back jams for Brandon Slater. Champagny, three on the other end, no good. Offensive rebound, more put back, yes. 40 seconds ago, gonna, I almost killed him <laughs> after the game. And if he's listening, oh, my man, James, I love you, James, but that was a horrendous shot, you recall. I don't think you could tell me what you had for breakfast, but you remember that exact shot. I do remember that <laughs> shot. Nine years as the Villanova head coach, now in the Villanova Athletics Hall of Fame, my partner, Steve Lapis. 16 games, 12%, so half the amount of time. They're the number three ranked half court team in the country. So this team very comfortable. And you know, that's why they have the foot fakes, half step, step through, basket. And Steve, one difference with Samuels this year is Champagny with a quick shot. Last year, 49% of Samuels' is field. St. John's at St. John's, they could have used another guard. No doubt. Champagny, finally, his first field goal of the night. He had missed his first eight. Adai Wusu starts the second half. Champagny for three, no. Matt, and they were late getting to Jermaine Samuels. A 20-point Villanova lead, which is down to 18 after the jumper by Champagny. They try to go to 15 and three on the year. Adai Wusu, nice pass to Champagny, could not get it to go, but St. John still has it. Champagny lays it in. Fortunate at that time, because you let him catch it under the basket and out of bounds play. Bad things usually happen. Champagny for three. Moore gets it and finishes. Champagny comes off a screen, steps into a two, and hits. And Champagny now with 12 points, so he scored. Samuel so active tonight, he's not able to get his hands on that one, but it was around the ball once again. Champagny, tip back, and there is Dunn. Champagny for three. What a really good box out by Colin Gillespie that time. Daniels. And you look at Villanova's schedule the rest of the regular season. Sunday at Butler on CBS. Steve, you and I will call that game. And then Creighton at home. So big opportunity. Coming, big opportunity. coming in. And he had to adjust. You know, the playing kind of off the ball. But once he kind of clicked in, he felt right at home. Now back playing point guard. A little bit as posh. And he's been consistent in who he is in regards to his points per game, but we see a lot more when he has those big games. Oh, yeah. What a dynamic score he can be in thinking about dynamic score on what he can do off the bounce. Yeah, he's, I think, an undervalued talent in a lot of ways. Sam Penny uh, with an answer. I mean, that was broken. But... That Lamu on the switch, Jesse Posh, and there's Champagny. He's so smooth. 
Anderson's okay with that, always has been. Dan Penny again. Hale gets the long rebound. Probably a good idea when you need a bucket to go to this side. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to put it in the hole. He is bored as so many people in this profession were happy to see him get this job after what happened to him in Arkansas. Yep. A rare miss from Champagny. Good game, ring bomb. Here come the Johnnies. Beat, beat, don't blink. Champagny takes it inside. Oh, the iron unkind. Twirled off. Samuel clears. Look at that. Well, it's not for the faint of heart going into the paint. Champagny with an answer. Well, you know what? Two, two decisions. The turnover by Mamu earlier. Too much dribbling that time. And another turnover for Reynolds Jr. this time. Champagne. Obiagu clears. Roden had to go down, kind of bend down and get that guy out of his shooting pocket. Perfect location this time. And it goes crying off the front rim. Yeah, Champagne couldn't ask for it. 20 minutes might be our 10. By how hard they play in the spurts that they play in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Champagne can't get it to go. Well, if you remember, and I know you do. Then when they had to face a Villanova team, to be honest, had some injury issues, but Georgetown fought through that. And, um, <laughs> that, that shows you the variety. He said two, three high. Well, uh, Mamu threw that like he was a 6'5 guard. Throw it up in the air just a little bit more. I think he could have, could have got that pass. I'm gonna not to say about that outcome, and that's what's you gonna have to do for a number of different reasons. Champagne, no. A follow, yes. As a shooter, you know where it's coming off, and that time Champagne able to be quicker to the opportunities at easier buckets, and he provides that. that. That's the driving kick right there I'm talking about. Those shots were falling earlier for Champagne. Give me Hagar for you. Driving lane here. And watch for possible offensive rebounds for St. John's when they're in the zone. Almost, but not quite for Posh as Roden is moment. Champagne for three. Boy, he almost to take a shot, and I thought he saw on the backside. It might have been Roden to try to throw it up. But a bad decision either way. It's going up. Champagne. Loose ball run down by Dunn. You know, you don't run as hard. Even though you're running hard in practice, you're just running differently in a game. Here's Champagne. Nets is usually his spot from the corner. For the Huskies. Here's Champagne. That's too strong. Priorities of help winning a game. No matter who's on the sideline for UConn. Here's Champagne. That's the guy they need to start and get him going. That shot blocked out of bounds. And that's a great match shot clock. They still find a way to get an open shot. It's just that extra, extra ball movement. Here's Champagne. Misses that three. Into Champagne. Working on Sonogo. Step back. Block. Good Someone. defensive play by Sonogo. Really good defense. Champagne recognized there was help. The elbow, especially a big guy. But he made it work. Here's Champagne for three. It's short. Adai Wusu with the offensive board. Got it. Alexander lost his foot. He somehow found it to Champagne. Uh, Erlington turns, fires, no good. There's Alexander. Champagne. Yes. Two point lead. For 
Two point lead. Champini off the screen and lays it in. It's fun out. Yeah, yeah, the way I looked at that race and the way it unfolded, Hemrick won the race off pit road. He just lost the race on that restart. Almondinger put it to him on that inside lane and drove away. Good luck to you both tomorrow. This is a big milestone for this program. There is Champagne, the conference's leading scorer, and he slams it home. He said enough of that. Time for me to get on the board. Lose four to five in a row. I think they're looking at UConn all right right now. Oh, you better believe they are. Exactly. Champagne delivers from deep. So maybe they can get the leading score in the conference. 9-1 run for St. John. Champagne against Mamu Kellis Vila. Will step back three. Just missed. We wanted that one for you to go on the high screen roll as much as tonight. Well, they trust him a little bit more, too, if he receives the pass. But again, that's over time. Last year, earlier in the year, they might not have thrown him the basketball in that position. So buried on the baseline and had to take an extremely difficult shot. Right. Champagne, he's been quiet in this first set. Again, the biggest leading scorer. And we're going to go the other way. Man for St. John's with nine. The pressure, Champagne has the steal, and one! On, and here comes St. John's with Williams having the basketball. Wow, some good looks that time by Roden, just couldn't put it down. Champagne will put it down, it is a three-point lead. And Champagne break, able to get a good look at it and not get another shot. And this pace is St. John's pace oh, right time. now. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> KB. He's starting to feel it, isn't he? Uh -huh. oh. Scoop. Oh, he tried to do the scoop, but the putback by Champagne is there. That's the thing about Champagne. Told you about a scoring. Champagne. He has had a nice little second hand here. He was quiet in the first half as we John's lead. This is Williams. Champagne's had a big second half step back. Got it. So smooth for Justin Champagne. He's got a game high. He figured it out a little bit mm -hmm. and would carry that in the second half, but it was St. John's who was the more aggressive team and came out that second half and kind of a step. No good. Good deed by St. Hall, but the rebound by Toro, the senior. And another opportunity for St. John's. Champagne, no good. Cole's got the rebound. Oh! And their offensive sets. Champagne leading score in the Big East. Over 19 per game. Air balls his first shot. And it's Butler that looks for run. Into a game, cut away a deficit uh, or sustaining the lead. The salt of victory away. Uh, free throws to determine the factor. Champagne knocks down the three. His first bucket of the game. Champagne. Leading score in the conference has three so far tonight. That's a long two, and he's got five. Yeah, just a natural. I mean, St. John starts to play with the minds of opponents because of their length and quickness and the different schemes. It appears they've got seven games with his point blank range dunks. Didn't play in the first matchup. Was suspended for failing to beat team standards. He's been much more consistent since. And often he's given the on-ball screens more effectively, not allowing St. John's to turn the corner and get an angle. Champagne uses the glass from a tough angle. And Champagne's got seven. First half, so it's a bit of a quiet first half for the freshman of the week in the conference, just four points. Julian Champagne, leading score in the Big East this season. He's got nine, and it stays that way with a miss on the three. 19 for Bryce Enzi. Enzi showing that versatility. Champagne right back the other way now. is important. You're not allowing them to get into their full court pressure schemes. So stops and shutouts always important, in particular tonight. Good look inside. Champagne moving well without the ball. Mm -hmm. For St. John's. And Mike DeCourcy's first four out. Champagne with a step back. Got it! Julian Champagne cuts it to one. 
So 30 minutes of this game has come off of the bench to score five big ones. Jim Penny is short. Rebound Enzi. For Rasheem Dunn. Dunn cut off of the baseline. Inside, Jim Penny with the foul. And a chance to put St. John's back in for... They've won five in a row in conference. Hodges guarding Champagny. Wow, how about this football pass to Champagny, who misses off the front of the rim. Alexander throws it. Seven, eight game stretch, and that's the difference. Defensively, they've been more locked in and more effective switching on one through five. Just. Oscar Lopez, the sophomore hitting that one with the runner back into the lineup after being banged up the last couple of games and making the most of it. Here's Shed Penny. Got surprisingly great rates with State Farm. State Farm? Let me see that book. I'm Jake from State Farm. Is this a commercial? Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Both position. Nick Angenda. 57% free throw shooter, missing his first 52 points against Seton Hall on Wednesday. Plato felt like the defense was there, allowing just 60 to the Pirates, but he said, we didn't have enough scoring down the stretch. Well, now Charlie... Champagny on the back down. Overcame the double team, and for St. John's, that's their first two points in the paint. Yep. It called for this winter quarter and playing his fourth career college game. Champagny off the window, times two. A great recognition by Alexander. He said, I need to get the ball. Has some struggles offensively, but certainly talented enough to be another big piece of DePaul's offense. Champagny gets it off the more tip. High IQ player, aggressive driver, and a smart defender. Now Adaiwusu penetrates. Hold out. To Cole. And Arkansas under Mike Anderson now facing his former coach. 12 on the timer. Champagny. You know, you just got to believe in yourself. And he did that, and so did Paul Reed. And Paul Reed's journey is still going on. Champagny got a second look and was fouled. And that was a design play out of a timeout. Nearly forced the turnover, Champagny from Alexander. Yeah, another broken play, but Alexander stays with it. The vision from Charlie Moore. See if it comes to fruition, though, as this game goes down the stretch. Another good contest by Weems on the Champagny three. A, a phenomenal tribute and a great example of St. John's and the Big East's dedication to diversity and inclusion. Really special efforts and what stands out. Iwusu coming down with it. St. John's trying to break up an 11 0 DePaul run. Champagny got it. A little early offense there. Nice decision by Champagny. Uh, been a, another reason why they've been able to stretch his lead out. Champagny's been ineffective in this second half. Put back slam for more. Maybe that's what St. John's needs. Well, they need to attack the rim. And how they played the last five games. Certainly, Charlie Moore has a lot to do with that as well. Chad Petty and St. John's needed it. He's got 24 on an island. The give to Dunn. Chad Petty knocks it down his fifth three. He's got 29. Well, the ball movement for some contact, but the concentration. This is a big time shot by the senior. Chad Petty again. Wusu comes up with it. Ball securities. The ball's been able to capitalize on it. More flashing. Out to Champagny. Champagny is off. And a foul on Champagny. Oh, again. Weems this time stepping in. Well, there's been a, quite a few times. Done. Down by six, in need of a three. Champagny, short. Angenda comes down with it. 
And the DePaul Blue Demons. That first meeting was February 6th in Rhode Island. St. John's won it 92 to 81. As Champagny connects in that first game's game, Champagny at night misses the lay-in. Well, they've won three out of four, and they really throttled Xavier. They were up the entire game and kept control of that. Champagny from the outside won't go, and the rebound to Duke. Villanova on Sunday, that's a perfect example that anything can happen in this Big East tournament. You took the words right out of my mouth for what they did to Villanova that day. Villanova obviously one of the top two teams. Butler one of the teams they've done lately. He's emerged in the absence of Jimmy Nichols, who's missing his sixth straight game tonight, and Champagny with the jam. Can I see that maybe for a draw? Champagny, step back three. Pretty. That's a big time shot. That's a six. Unset the check in next whistle. Champagny, step back three. Boy, shots, can't knock him down. Reeves is one for seven from deep tonight. Champagny for three. You bet. This guy can shoot. The father was a great soccer player here at St. John's. Ranford helped lead St. John's to the national title in 1996. Three assists. He's been spectacular. Six of seven from the floor. Champagny won't go. Wow. Oh, Duke had it. Long. You need to be ready to beat them off the dribble. And one of the things about St. John's, because they deny and pressure so much, they don't help as well. That's not their strength. Their strength, that's a great shot there by Champagny. That's what he forced 13 turnovers against the Bronx. They had to come back. It's the, only, knock off rider. It's the only game this year that they didn't score at least 20 points off the other team's turnovers. So that's a big part of the St. John's up first part of the season. That wasn't the case against Wagner and obviously not the case tonight. Well, they seem very fresh tonight. I mean, they've played a lot of games in a short period of time, and that's coming off a COVID pause. So these guys off turnovers. That's a big key. From down to Champagny with 10 on the shot clock. Tough shot. And the rebound pulled down by Jared Roden. 22 points. Look at how Seton Hall is really packed in. They're not out of the, their, their feet are inside the three-point line. That was a fault. Tyrese Samuel there fell asleep, turned his head, and that's why they threw the ball over. Julian Champagny from the end of last year to this year, averaging 22 points a game. He's got seven. The rest of his team has eight. Champagny for three. And that was three. And the long rebound into the hands of Cole, who's on the push. Bumps it down. Champagny with the finish. Nice break. It's only a four-point game. Yeah, that was a lead in this ball game. Trailed by as many as ten. A three would take the lead. Champagny backing down road and earns the tie. Champagny has had a great first half. Boy, that was minutes each. Play 11 guys and get after it every second. Remember last year, too, you had LJ Figueroa, you had Mustafa Heron. Those were the guys that teams would key on. Figueroa transferred to Or. So versatile. He's a pretty good passer, too. He hasn't had a chance in this game, but he averages over two. He hasn't been getting touches. He has not, and, and that's a great point, Jason. Well, there he is, obviously, to get a touch there. That's what you got to do. You got to get this kid the ball. He's got 14. Now to Champagny. Bump. And the finish. Oh, my goodness. This guy knows how to operate in the low. And 6'11 with the dribble. I mean, he's going to the basket at will. Toro trying to track down the offensive rebound. Wasn't the original scheduled game for either of these teams. But it has been a good one in Newark. Champagny goes to the right, and he hits again. Hey, look, I mean, you know where they team. Seven-point lead, three-possession game. Give this guy the ball. Caught it off the glass. Champagny has 20 again. Like, that's a tough shot. You know posted up Molson. Champagny on the drive. 
Follows his own miss. It's batted around. St. John's another shot at it. Iwusu to Champagny. Caught it deep in the post. Mamu Kelashvili didn't give him any space. That was a real... Champagny has it. Inside. Wow. Drills the two. Mike That's Anderson good. does have a timeout. by Butler when they see and know where the shot's coming from. Champagne misses from distance. Good run out here. Yep. Golden leaks out. Stepped in for the red storm for the first time. And so too is Vince Cole. Champagne from the baseline. That's no good. Ten on the shot clock. Cole. Alexander. Champagne for three. Yes. And that'll work for that one, though. The zone has caused them half court sets, but Coach Jordan mentioned to us also, hey, if we get a good, quick shot, we're going to take it. Oh, Champagne, cook it. Back to back three. Good recovery, though, defensively by Butler. Champagne, they forgot about him. <laughs> he forgot about that guy, isn't he? It's almost like a delayed fast break. Second half of games. See what we got here. Here's Champagne. Goes right to the rack. And avoiding the charge at the same time. Champagne. Yes. The three. The basketball. He banged knees, I think, too. He's struggling a little bit getting around. He's got 10. That went in and out for Champagne. Uh, how'd that happen? That looked as good as his makes. Rolls off. Here comes Dunn. Three on two if they hurry. Alexander to Champagne. Oh, no. The follow, yes. Good work done by Alexander, making the right decision to come to his left side. Champagne. He knew that was off, too. Alexander. And let's see if they can snuff this out. Regine for Champagne. That one's no good. And Thompson back on the floor. You see how different this team is. By Seton Hall by eight points in their last game, which was a big reason why they lost. They've got good big men like Fremantle, Carter. Got to get these guys the ball. Champagne connects with a two-point field goal. They may look at that one. Yeah, I'm surprised that Xavier didn't try that zone for another possession yeah. because that was a tough shot they made. He was about three steps behind the arc. Champagne for three. No good. One and done for... Tandy had the ball knocked away. He wanted to go down toward Carter on the opposite side. Talking about Champagne, count the bucket. Jay Wright That's and Mike point. Anderson felt like, well, Jay, I think, called Mike Anderson, I think our kids need to go home, and Mike agreed, and that's why they postponed that game. Champagne missed on both shots. I think if Mike Anderson knew what he knows. Hey, St. John's done a better job turnover-wise, though, in the last 10 minutes of this, of this first half. Little zone again yep. for Xavier. Champagne for three. No good. Both teams a little pool from the Meanwhile, has gone over four minutes since its last bucket. Four Dribbles. seconds left. Champagne for three. No good. And that one thuds off the back of the iron. Two-point lead for St. John's. And Champagne can't convert. He wanted a foul. And the rebound. A lot of droughts in this game left for both yeah. teams. I think the zone here has been... That's, that's who you want to get the ball to, and you want to get it to right in that spot. Adai Russo, outside for Williams. Champagne from the baseline, no good. Ball is loose. And Odom. Team one run over the last four minutes and 45 seconds. 11-0 over the last 3-10. Shot block from behind. How about the minutes Griffin's given to Beat you up the dribble, and they're going to rely on just standing around the perimeter. It's, it's going to be tough. Champagne still with just two points in the second half. Make it four. And a chance for five. Or open. 
The lead is nine. Champagne with the ball. He's got four personal fouls. Has it again. Launches the three. It's good. And now all of a sudden, it's a six point career against St. John's. Yeah, both of these teams come at you from the defensive end, too, Brian. So it'll be interesting starting right now, man to man efforts. Champagne first shot, no good. Williams. For a guy that big, just really tells you what type of talent he is. He was the Big East freshman of the week. And Champagne misses that three. He is in it. Here's Champagne. Thought he got fouled. Just threw it up. <laughs> Stolen by Alexander. Yeah, you can't put a lazy bounce pass into the post like that. Champagne. And the follow with authority by Isaiah Moore. Wow, but he got his own board. Rejected by Lewis. Here's Champagne. In and out. Nearly turned it over. See the crowd concept right there? Three Marquette players on this side. He makes some pays. He knocks down the baseline jumper. His first two points of the game. For seconds, I guess. Erlington left that one short. Daiwusu. Champagne's comes in and out. Here's Bosch Alexander. Here's Champagne. That shot blocked. Back. Yeah, it'll be stationary. Second on John. Champagne. Wow. He can't find it today. One for eight. St. John's had eight in the first half. In the second half, another eight already. Champagne shot rejected. One of ten. He is now from the field. There's the three. Did you talk about he loved that corner three? He loves that really in points. Two dunks in a matter of 28 seconds. I would hit the bottom of the rim on the way up. <laughs> Champagne. That's from his spot in the corner. Against the zone, too. Good reaction. But yeah, you got to force him right. Alexander to Champagne. He powers it in. Marquette has to be careful right now because Sham be careful right now because Champagne trying to he's coming out of the dribble and the ball up against this guy. Oh, oh man. man, another rip. He's got a layup. Champagne hits a spot. And the biggie scoring leader is starting at the rim. Nice look to the middle. Wow. For the lead. Yes. You probably want to get a timeout. Yeah, here it comes. Lift weights. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, and rejected by Roberts again. His second. Uh -oh. Jam Penny. It misses that three. Yeah, contested. Much better job of contesting. And to see what they're in, communicate it so everybody's on the same page early. Here's Jam Penny. Too strong. Wow. Mm. Real strong. Yeah, good shooter, too. That three point lead. Three minutes left. Here's Champagne for three. Boys, talk about sticking one in somebody's face. Lewis right there. They go to Champagne. He's been clutch in the second half. A step back. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. A little bit of a force. In Marquette, in that category. They go, man, there might be a slip cut in here, too, to the basket. Champagne for the win. game being able to be physical get a tap out steal an extra possession and Creighton lands into a triple Chef Penny lost it on the way up got it back and feathers went through and again St. John's really ascended and make sure that they're not allowing the Red Storm to get in the lane Chef Penny committed second field goal just as I say that a straight line Penny St. John's down a pair just getting started here in Omaha Nebraska Transition three. Little bit of everything. Julian Champagne. Always feel like it's important. Both ends of the floor is impressive. Champagne has missed a shot. Three for three, eight points. Mm. Oh, four for four. Tough shot. 
yards with Jefferson in his career against St. John's. He's now 21 for 25 shooting the basketball. That's just unbelievable. Connell, he was Zagorowski sidelined. That's a that's a lot of points that you gotta fill in that void. And O'Connell has come in and been aggressive. Again, a streaky shooter. Another good shot. Creighton's done a good job of getting in the lane, landing on two feet, being uncomfortable, and finding open Jays. Champagne, quick trigger. More of the same. He has now got 14 points. He's 54 first half points. Good golly, Miss Mount. Champagne, long two. He is now six for eight, shooting the basketball. Loose on. And I did some quick math there. Nothing in kind of the no zone for Creighton. First shot of the second half is missed. They've got 30 points on three pointers, blocked away by Bitch. Analytics, but he's not necessarily one of those guys that's completely the anti mid range, but at least in the first half, the analytics guys loved the shot selection from Creighton, either threes or layups. Up and through Champagne. Good stick to itiveness by the sophomore. Unorthodox finishing at the rim. And Ballock took off about a half a step sooner than the shot blocker thought he would. Champagne swirls it through. So five quickies for Champagne here. In the Good closeout for Mahoney there on the catch. Champagne denied at the rim, rebounded by Bishop. Some numbers across the board missing for Creighton, but so far so good. Blue Jays have 61 points. They lead by 15. Champagne, two more. Wow. Ballock finds him. I think St. John's, Eric, is in this weird place of what they want to do is pressure and speed the game up, but they're having a hard time getting stops, so and they don't want to get getting called. Canfield comes in the game, turns it over. Alexander. Champagne, two more. Those are the easiest two of the night for Champagne. That's St. John's basketball. That. Here's Champagne. Long two. Tough chance. O'Connell on the run out. No one in front. Yeah, St. John's has had issues defending man-to-man, -man, so they're trying some zone, but you can tell their rotations defensively aren't quite there, quite there out of the zone. Champagne had shot for a couple of minutes. Fires Let's run some offense, and who ends up getting the triple? Damian Jefferson. Oh. Locked away, Bishop. Champagne. Maybe being, maybe being asked to do a little bit too much. And Alexander runs down the loose ball. Good strength. Julian Champagne, a 30-point ball game. Because he's undersized playing the five, but he's got athleticism, but you got to put a little beef on him, and that's helping him in the post. Champagne, hey, he was going 100 miles an hour, stops on a dime, and has the soft touch. Sounds against Utah Valley. And one of the guys, I think it's he's versatile, playing with a little more understanding of what he can do. Oh, there's Champagne. Boy, he loses you, doesn't he? The baseline rubs. Champagne puts it on the deck. He was twisting on Genda, didn't block it, but affected the shot. Line up right now by St. John, so a lot of dribble driving. And Champagne gets some touches. Yeah, here he goes. Look who's back. And he drains it. So much for that foot problem. <laughs> Dr. Show. Champagne, step back three, swish. Most unbelievable. A little dribble hand off to Pound area. Long way from Tulsa. Little different. Champagne again. Alexander, that's good. Hans has won three out of four. It feels like it's starting to turn the corner with an impressive first half tonight in Chicago. Julian Champagne with just nine. Like that ball screen. Got to put a little stress on the opponent. Nice lob oh. and back cut. <laughs> Pretty read by Posh. Yeah, exactly. Well, coaches have to be persuasive, you know. <laughs> See Well, that was a gimme for him. We're chasing it. Robert was done. Twisting left and right. Boy, nice pace here by Dunn. Roberts, one dribble. Got a little closer, couldn't convert. Now 
that. I think Cole can elevate over more if he has to. There's Champetti. Steps back. 15-footer. Rebound to Moore. Let's see if Champagne can go to work. 11 points, scoreless in the second half. Banks it, that's out. He's not been able to drive as well as if... So these coaches, these programs... All right, Raph, 7.45 to go. I like it's this. It's to fall back with an eight. And Champagne, yeah, with some pressure. Yeah, he just... Re and pardon me, it's three on Freeman Liberty. He has 16 points. Champetti, step back, missed everything. Alexander, forcing the, forcing the issue. There's the fearless well, freshman. A well-rested Posh, too. He's had some time off, much like Champagne. Nice use of the screen. There you go, that's his game. He can make the three. I know. I love the way he's mercilessly the ball be sound. Don't let them turn the corner. Good closeouts on any three-pointer. Champetti. Oh, maybe a dagger three. Wow, well, I'll say. The three-point line. But when I look at their stats, I say, he's got to be better than that. But that's what he is. He just seems to make them all when you see him. Julian Champagny's first shot won't go. Offensive rebound to Dunn. Champagny's second shot is off the mark. You know, one thing, I watched that scene. Champagny, catch and shoot three. Air ball. He's now 0 for 3. Had him as one of the guys that couldn't make them, so maybe everybody can make them. There. <laughs> First points in about five minutes for Villanova as Champagny still remains scoreless. Robinson Earl blocked by Champagny. Three on one for St. John's. Alexander great, to great. Champagny. Pretty play on the break. Timeout, Villanova. And that's the other thing. They've got they've got Villanova sped up a little bit. Villanova usually takes their time in the half court. Well, Rasheem Dunn said the key for St. John's. the tempo. So St. John's is fine like that. Let's go up and down. Champagny. Well, he wow. hasn't been able to buy one. The two stars, if you will, she will. She Champagny for three. Oh. It's good. Time out, Villanova. You knew it was shocked if Villanova doesn't get one run in him in this game. Champagny. Let's see if that run comes here. Moore. That was his fourth. He remains out there for the Red Storm. He's got the ball over to Champagny. Open look at a three, and it's good for Julian Champagny. That is really good offense. Otherwise, the game's going to be over. They don't foul. Champagny had a block, gets it back, and lays it in. I'm surprised they didn't try one time to foul. 60 seconds into the ball game, and already a combined eight points scored. Champagny with the misfire, one and done, rebounded by Nate Watson. Getting started, minute and a half into this one, a 5 3 lead for the Providence Friars. Champagny along the baseline. Bullet pass from Alexander getting it done. Great pass. Champagny finds an open. Nice shot. Hawk was a pick and pop big. He's known for stretching the floor and making shots from the perimeter. Champagny, that was too easy. Wide open look on the baseline. Same spot. He found that strong move. He'll finish those later in the ball game. Great post up. Wow, transition bucket. Look at Champagny. That ball is in his hands for a smith. A miss. They've come out very aggressive and done a great job. Champagny from the free throw line. Hall oh, rattles it through. That's already four field goals for Champagny. That was a stilted offensive possession. Great defensive pressure by St. John's. They get out in transition. Heat check shot right here. Oh, my! Twelve early points for Champagny. Line. Dylan Adaiwusu also in the ball game. Champagne, you're kidding me! Another three for Julian Champagne. He's already made three three pointers. Gives it up. Champagne, catch and shoot. This is the second miss in eight field goal attempts for. Big job of finding that right spot and position in the paint. 
Champagny walled off along the baseline, had it knocked away by Horkler. Good stick to it of miss. Yes, it was. Great second jump to go get that offensive rebound and finish with the... Champagny, Big East leading scorer. Woo. Continues to be hotter than fish grease. And catches the ball, hard jab step to the right. St. John's as a team shooting 66%. Been the main bugaboo for St. John's. Champagny tapped around, nothing falling. Horkler, a contested rebound. Eight up to the rim and go score. Champagny. But I just checked into the game. Had the Williams gets it over to Dunn. Champagny doesn't stay in his hands very long. Another swish for the sophomore. Catch and shoot three. That's done. And again, Horkler lost it. And again, St. John's can't capitalize. Particular play. Providence can't complain about the 73 points they've scored. They just need to get some stops. Yes, they do. There's a stop. The miss by Champagny. Rebound by first attempt. You know St. John's wants to push tempo. They're looking to run off of misses to get the ball up quickly. Ch Champagny, that's what he can do. The Big East top scorer. Well, the scouting report is he's a very... If they want to win this game at home. And Xavier, bigger, more physical, they're going to try to make that a, a point of emphasis. Champagny off the dribble. Offensive board for Roberts. Champagny rises in and out, and the Johnnies are one for seven, so some cold shit. 12 on the shot clock. Done to Champagny over Fremantle, and he hits. The ball movement was there. They reversed the ball a couple times, and a nice read. A pair of triples. Champagny again. Off this time. He loves that corner three. That's one of his sweet spot baskets by Xavier to cut this to a two-point lead. Alexander up top to Champagny. And the eyes, they read their eyes. Julian Champagny looked at how to make a decision on whether to guard Champagny in the high post or guard the three. Alexander picked his pocket. Alexander upstairs to Champagny. Goodness. You can't beat it. You're scoring off your defense, and that's a high percentage shot. Champagny pulls. Not a bad shot. You know, he got the space he needed. Erlington with the straight up defense. Now the Johnnies have a that five on here. two. Alexander to Champagny. And that's the third lob from Alexander to Champagny and gonna stay in that zone. And there's gonna be opportunities if they can reverse the ball a couple times. Champagny from the corner. Alexander willed his way to giving his team stepping up with 15. Xavier not fouling here. Champagny with the contact and the dagger. Big time play by, in my opinion. Wahab. Again, young players will try to grab that ball and power up through two or three defenders. That's a terrific play kicking that out. Champagny no good, but taken away by Posh Alexander. Getting back defensively. Still, Mike Anderson trying to implement his system. It takes a few years. That should be goaltending, and it is. It's called, yeah, this is a team, St. John. Marcellus Erlington in the game, along with Rasheem Dunn. Tough one. <laughs> you got Pickett, who's 6'9". He's got a 7-foot <laughs> Donald Carey. You throw that to the top, and now he seals. That's just a better angle from up top. Beautiful pass, but a block inside, and another one by Georgetown. The side of the rim, and Dunn has it. 
Nice pass off the glass. Score the field goal, and he'll go to the line. Pretty play, and Champetti converts. The team uncomfortable, and to get yourself up. Now, now what do you do? Do you continue that? You got to find a way to run some offense and get high percentage shots if you're not getting them in, in transition. I think that's the challenge right now. From Two misses by Rasheen Dunn, who came off the bench. Oh, and a killer. Yeah. Right back. That hurts. And Penny over the backboard, and that is out of bounds. Just didn't look right. I think that's, you know. A great pass by Alexander and a terrific cut underneath. Alexander for Champagny, who drives up high, partially blocked. The follow is right there. Attack. Again, Wahab steps. Alexander in the paint, nearly lost it, gets it back. Threw it away, and the jumper a little bit short. Rebound, St. John's, the putback won't go. But the foul. Free Arkansas UAB, you know what he brings, and that's what Posh Alexander has with the steal right on cue. Two on nothing in the alley -oop. And they do best, steal the basketball, they get one. It's a great job stealing the ball. Very unselfish. And Penny with the flush. That's being unselfish. That's the heel of Murray collects another rebound. He had six rebounds. The three-point shot hasn't been going the last couple of games. Out to Adai Wusu. Another open look. Strong Champagne. Body no foul. Posh Alexander is only six. He's on for a while. It's still great. Back out to Champagne. Down to three on the shot clock. Floats it off the glass. Fouls his miss, and he'll go to the free throw line. Two tough competitors. Go, 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 go. Little zone by Ryder. Change your pace. I like it. I can't rebound the ball. Roberts can't go. Henderson. He's highly recruited. Like Cal State Northridge. We, uh, expect great things from him. Fights for the rebound. Cole swatted out of there by Bladen. It's on Saturday. A little more confidence. A little more poise. Champagne got a good screen. He can't finish. Roberts. Nobody boxed him out. The offensive. Bladen got his way. And Cole blocked it out of there. Williams on the push. Champagne can't finish. He looked at the post. Boris Champagne, best scorer. Quiet first half and blocked by the quarter. One. Alexander didn't get it. Basketball guys like him. I like his head I think it's the way when you give the effort, you're rewarded at the line. Champagne, tough too. That's what St. John's getting. Game realizing that you've got an opportunity here. Yeah, right now they feel pretty good. They get a chance. That's where they got to go. So just go get the ball to Champagne. Right now, 23 points a game. And him the basketball. Can't guard him. Pulls down the offensive rebound. Right back up with it and finishes. Champagne had six in the first half. He's got shot clock. The quarter. Lost it. Opportunity for the Red Storm to regain the lead. And in style. Once again, the defense gets her up. Riders in the zone. They stay in it. Get the board to Champagne. Take it. Offensive board. Can't finish. Another tap back. Played and pulls down his ninth rebound. That's your man. 17 for Murray. 17 for Henderson. Three point lead with four and a half to go. Champagne. Open for three. Can't force the tie. Murray saves it to Penny. See what they're in. Zone to man to man. Looks like a zone. Patient. Good ball movement early. Can hit the side of the backboard, but there's Champagne for the putback. Yep. <laughs> 18 points, 10 rebounds, double. I couldn't make shots yesterday. Loner rebounds the miss. Barcelo loses the handle. And St. John's on the move. Champagne can't hit. Coming off a career high 29. We've seen that a couple times so far tonight. He gets it back and puts it in. He's just tough. There's some guys that throws on the line with nobody on the line and people say I just think it messes with whatever you're used to. That's kind of the way I see it. I think you become accustomed to something. Yeah. You, 
And again, holding a team that wants to get out and move it like St. John's to a dozen points through the first close to 12 minutes of this game. Party trick? Sure. But I'm not that fun. I don't go to a lot of parties, so. I think you're fun. Okay, so I don't get invited to parties. Okay. Keep that in mind. Foul go the other way. Raises money each year for the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Ryan Ruko and Rebecca Lobo making their way into Bumbleville. Alex Barcelo got into the swing of things and a dozen points in that first half. There's a steal and immediately the other way and one for Champagny. A little bit more, run something, feel like you did something in the half court because if you miss that, it's an automatic run out. Champagny jumper, Alexander the rebound, wow. and he puts it in. Seven here at the Roman Legends Classic. John Crispin, Champagny gets in close, a little strong, and B. White. Make enough shots to set up the pressure and, and keep the pressure high. Cole, after the ball got loose for a second, missed the shot, got the up, got the offensive rebound, and then a foul. The uh, thing is, in college basketball, now you run sets, but ultimately within that set, there's a situation that you have to make the right read to get the right look. Well, the read comes before the pass. Yeah, right? First point guard yep. who's learned to find his own offense and he's pretty special. Well at times you got to play a guy on the ball and then off the ball to kind of get him a different look from time to time. Harms lost the handle on the feed from Barcelo. Well, Harms thought it was going to be a ball screen. Barcelo threw it out. Stretched out. Hopefully he's able to to return st john's down by six inside and they get a push off offensive foul and that is on isaiah moore and then scrambling sitting in the zone you usually end up giving up something easy so i struggle to see that as the best move in that moment but again i don't know everything where st john's go champagne now lost the handle More way up. against the pressure. You can throw the ball up, no one's going to get it. And he also shoots the ball pretty well. Something I would consider down the stretch here, unless you're shutting them down. But for BYU, a good response. That that's the thing. They were they were just deplorable shooting the basketball, and it's not something you could even. Yeah. George has had a good game too. He really has he's looked good the two games he played here. Yesterday rough for everybody else, but he had a good game. minutes a game is enough for that dude because he, he's a part of the identity of what they want to do and who they want to be and, and that's what you're looking for he's also got that quiet edge too you know some guys have an edge and you hear great the number nine team in the country greg williams champagne from way up top front rim no good and the rebound goes to ballock the champagne has made a big shot what I want you to watch for in these possessions, though, Dave. See if Penny drills a three. I tell you what, they're keeping them on the perimeter. That's just post players do they have, so they got to get everything off of these hard drives. Yeah, Penny goes glass. No, wow, what a rebound by Damian Jefferson. And deep Hulk Brenner was able to get. Cole dribbled into a double team. Here's Williams. Jim Penny. 3-3 ball, nothing doing there. Rebound goes to Mahoney. After he's hit a few shots. He's done. So Sham Penny guarded by Mahoney. He's cut off. Dribbled into a double team. Goes bank, nothing doing there. And a fine rebound by Bishop. Ahead here in the second half. Nice look underneath. Give it back. Moore maybe over penetrated Jim Penny from distance and hits. That's a three. Timely buckets by Sham. Bishop's got nine. Jim Penny hit his last shot. Two for two. Both from distance. Oh, he was waiting. And you got to get your hands up early. 13 minute mark. Got it to two. But now it's back to six. It's Jim Penny going hard to the basket. And that was denied by Kalkbrenner and Jefferson. And what do we got? Got a foul here. Toro. 
Oh, passed up an opportunity. Champagne lets it fly from three. Nothing doing there. And a rebound. What oh, a blown layup. Right at the touchdown. Yeah. But for Jefferson coming off the game against Marquette, he had 17 points. Champagne. Shot was challenged. Partially blocked. O'Connell back the other way. Referee. He's okay. 8.51 to go. Champagne off the curl. No. And foul is going to go against St. John. Dunn trying to turn the corner from there. David Carraher in the game. And there's a bucket. Nagarowski 0 for 7 from 3 against Marquette. 6 for 7 tonight. Sam Penny, quick release, and that's good for 3. And you know what? It, regardless of score, that's an important shot. Comes into the rock and wins it in overtime. I got to be honest. I know it's down the middle. The coaches I talked to, they foul all day long. This, this is <laughs> prominent. This East basketball, it's the Hoyas. The Red Storm, second time in as many days. Champagne with a nice reach move there. He scores, and Patrick Ewing wants a timeout. Second meeting in a week. Hoyas won last week at McDonough down at Georgetown. Line drive shot by Champagne. Nothing doing there. Pick it rebound. St. John's up by 13, the largest lead so far, and looking for more. Champagne way outside and brings it home. Timeout. Patrick Ewing has seen enough. Williams in the backcourt with Dunn. Williams to Champagne. Free look. Couldn't get it. They battle for it. And Blair comes away. That shot is carrying. Well done. He is a sharp shooter from the three-point line. Good to see him get a clean look. Champagne with a soft touch. Not rewarded. And here come the Hoyas. Down 11 at the control. See when they get Alexander back at some point. But she's been a force. Here's Champagne. Been out of the game for a while. Front rims that. Not enough legs in that shot. It's your quality of shot, taking care of the basketball, and making sure that you're getting back and doing the right things on defense. Champagne for three. That's a biggie. 81 64. His team. Josh LeBron. John. Williams. Champagne and Pickett came up lame there like he did an ankle and they rolled it. Found Turo. Alexander. Oh, yeah. Highlight material. Great setup by Pot. New lead for a totally new team for Gino Ford, the second year head coach. And Champagne buries it from the corner. He's very comfortable, Champagne. You can tell that he's in a nice play out of the high post. He gives it away. A steal by Champagne. Champagne is altered there by Policelli, and it'll go back to the Seawolves. Pull up ahead to Champagne, who tries another corner. And that's the sweet spot for the sophomore. Well, you like the way they're sharing the ball. A nice skip pass by Cole. Reception by Williams. A running gun start. Here in Queens. And Rodriguez has back cut. And got an open layup. Had an open layup. St. John's falling asleep. And Penny long on that attempt. But wills his way back over to Alex. 21 points, five assists. He played 40 minutes on Friday against Fairfield. Champagne answers. Well, that's what you know you can do. When you make a couple threes, it's going to open up driving lanes, and you got. Jaden Sales played at Akron. He played 64 games. He had double figure performances against the likes of USC. Now three for 13 from beyond the arc. And Penny on the drive, fighting for the board. And because he fought for it, St. John's will get next. Alexander, once again, able to swipe it quickly from Palacelli. And that just leads to a Champagne triple. Just a heads up play by Alexander. And there was a stat for steals in the backcourt. Nine of the last 10 years, Stony Brook has finished in the top two of the conference. Champagne, boom! Again, Alexander, the guy that makes the play, you know, if you can give it your best shot. And 
Got to give Stony Brook a lot of credit for coming out here and competing. And he said by the same token, he loves the opportunity for his program to be on a nationally televised game. Potentially a travel on Langford. Do it. Yep. All right, it was definitely a travel on Langford. There you go. I'm going to work in the word. These talented freshmen, you're like, oh, but Duke's got a great class. Kentucky's got a great. Yeah, but how do they play together? Is there chemistry? What's the dynamic like in the locker room, let alone on the floor? And then beyond that with you know, the rebound. First off, it was a good rebound. But this, the little Euro step to avoid the charge. There's no way you can pick up the charge because you can cover so much ground. You can't hold your ground as a defender. Lame. 6-0 spurt for St. John's. If you remember the days of friendly service from an experienced banker, you'll be... Wednesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app, it is the 26th annual Jimmy B Classic. And uh, not sure how many of the first 25 were as good as this. West Virginia, yeah. number one, Gonzaga, 7 Eastern. Let it down and finish at the rim. You thought we were done bringing heat? Wrong. Let the spokes take if you're wanting to play fast basketball, you live with that. That's an aggressive mistake that if they make that pass, it's a layup. Do you take the open shot for a touchdown? Absolutely. I think you mix paces where they want it. I'm curious as to the flip side of that and how BC handles it, but the next stoppage gets us to the under four, and that's basically an under. Time. St. John's going to go deep. They were playing 9 10 guys, especially at this pace. Wow. Champagne, how about it? He didn't look like he missed anything after missing the first two games with a sprint. He is already one shy of a career high. Williams off the feed from Dylan Adai Wusu. That's the fourth assist already for Adai Wusu. As the game gets less physical in one way, it gets more athletic in another and that's where you're able to capitalize on the the freedom that you're giving guys are going to have fun with this and you, know, you think about led to a quick shot and the important thing is it led to a quick shot it didn't lead to a reset so the pace is still up more cans a jumper here comes the and see people indoors not yeah. wearing masks and uh we wouldn't recommend going to your local grocery store and doing that necessarily but the reason it's able to happen here what can BC do to make St. John's rethink how they're playing this game because right now there's no reason to change how you're playing if you're St. John's BC's got to do something that changes the, the whole fruitful few years in Jamaica Queens Julian Champagne only a sophomore missed the first two games of the year with an ankle sprain he's three off a career high Posh Alexander, the freshman from our Savior Lutheran, a Brooklyn kid. Approach. Will you keep playing this way? Will you keep playing at a frenetic pace if we cut this to two? If we cut it to five? That's how you regain control of this game. <laughs> oh, boy. St. John's fortunate to have it back. It was a part of me that was saying, he ain't doing that. No, he's not. He was lining up his steps, but he was sizing this guy. Not stopping that. 6 4, 235. Seriously. It's a lead blocker Look, right some there. Some dudes, some dudes, he's the head. <laughs> yeah. Well said. So give the Wolverines an early lead. the window that's a goal for Mike Anderson getting Vince Paul. more vertically in the shots that he didn't block just his presence in contesting he was able to influence play for Leonard Hamilton there it is. there's an answer from Erlington 46 don't just settle just for trying to go one-on-one -on -one unless you got a great shot Champagne what a save by Champagne and Posh cleans up on it wow fading three no, Adai Wusu. They've got numbers. Alexander lays it in. Brian, you and I were talking at one of the breaks about leading free throw shooter. Top 10 in field goal percentage. Champagne comes up for the steal. Ahead to Rashid Dunn, who is able to squeeze it past the block attempt of MZ. Well, there's that disruptive ball's offense. Champagne gets it off the more tip. 
Alexander hangs and hits. Great body control and you know, it's a scrappy. They better give some help. More, that's a two, and it's good. And then Champetti the steal. Little lackadaisical pass by David Duke that time. Williams for three. Yes! A fuck. Scoreless against UConn in their last game out. In fact, three of the last four has been scoreless. 20 points and plus. Greg Williams fades and knocks down the jumper. All right, the pace starting. St. John's got a piece of that one. Williams to Champetti. That's a good cut. Yeah, that's a beautiful cut and a good look. By the way, the foul is on Posh Alexander, his third. Three is good. Nothing but net. Vince Cole. Marquette. First two minutes, St. John's came out really with trying to tag them with one. Nice cut to the basket. Good delivery by Champagny. So far here, you're talking about points in the paint. And it stands to reason from the fact that Damian Jefferson is the most, most athletic Blue Jay, and St. John's is an athletic team, so he matches up well with them. Deep shot, that's a three. All right, coming right back to you. All right, St. John's in trouble. Down 15, two minutes to play. Champagne, beautiful pass. Unselfish, finds more. I've been impressed with Champagne. A little hook in his game he's working on. Oh, tough pass. Should have shot at Weems. And it's another slam for Isaiah Moore. Man, he doesn't have to run back. He's going to make that shot. You know, he's a pretty good shooter. 15 feet in, just off a little bit on that one. Alexander, that's the second three ball by the freshman. Feeling good. St. John's looks to run a nip and tuck first half. Champagny, the extra pass to Moore, who knows what to do with it. Isaiah Moore. Well, not only was it a great look, but nice job in the nation's capital. So the Johnnies come off a tough loss at Seton Hall the other night on Friday night in Newark. And they start out with a basket. Georgetown. Georgetown. Well, this is where you have to get them. But you just can't throw the ball away. Again, their spacing is not great. Wow. alley -oop and a beauty in the finish for St. John's. Isaiah Moore. Big acquisition by Riley this season. Nearly 10 points a game last year. Incarnate word started for the Cardinals. Inside the arc. That's a big shot for Cole. They need to get him his confidence back. Getting started. Cut to the gold, little fadeaway, and that rattles in and out and in for Greg Williams Jr. Well, for BYU, I think you have the advantage. If you play frenetically the way St. John's wants to play, then you probably lose the game. Jumper will go there. Marcellus Erlington, kind of. This is the game they want, right? Back and forth. Just doing an excellent job of finding those angles, not only attacking the offensive glass, but getting inside. Done. Boy, he avoids the block attempt by Bishop to get St. John's on the board. Blue Jays looking for somebody to come free. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Alexander, wild shot, took the body and scored. Of all the skills of... And wins it in overtime. I got to be honest. I know it's down the middle of the coaches I talked to. They foul all day long. This is <laughs> Providence is fortunate. Hey, John's really doing a good job moving around the Champagne going baseline. Cole wide open. Three ball. Got it. And throughout the course of the early part of that position. Can run or float in lane? No. Champagne with the rebound. Outside Williams for three. What's that again, Dave? A second chance offer. Shot clock at six. Somebody's going to have to go. Champagne to Williams. Fires it up with two, and he hits. Oh, brother. A desperation. Let's beat the clock. Rim protectors. So St. John's, you can't go down the lane and go to the rim weak. You got to go strong. That's Isaiah Moore with the elbow jumper. And Mikhail Foreman transferred to Cal. Mind you, 
transfer to Miami, Andrew Garcia to Georgia. And they've come out here with a whole new look and have done a nice job staying right in it. And, and Penny, long on that attempt, but wills his way back over to Alexander. Nice second effort by Shan Penny, staying with the play and not giving up on the missed shot. He and now another steal, this time by Cole. Johnny's have numbers up ahead to Moore. Another two-hand jam and a timeout for Stony Brook. This is how you want to come out if you're the Red Storm scorer. I'm not sure what you do with that. The, the game is likely won by the guard matchup, as most of college basketball is, but I will be paying attention to the game down low, and Kelly has got it going. And on two feet, they can pivot their way to an open area. Champagne lost it, and he throws it away. And a one-handed hammer the other direction by Jamal Kane. St. John's trying to get it in, having some trouble. They do have two timeouts. They want to travel. They're going to get a travel. Off the catch is Champagne, and Marquette has it back. Swatter all over Champagne. Yeah, they've made it really hard on him. It's off pass, and Cole didn't save it. Champagne drew the double and threw it away. See if they get Champagne going. Good help. Turns it over. You know, you, you come over, you're used, you, you're, you have to play with the guys that you're given before you can get your own recruits. Champagne lost it. Here comes the Huskies. Sonogo, fall away, nothing. That was knocked away from Williams. Here is Storm. He's got 12 now. Lead is six. It's stolen by Cole. RJ. Action here, a little rush screen, something like that. I just, I don't care to make him go one on one. I just, when you don't, when you're struggling, you don't want to have to force it that way. John, two on two, done. And Champagne will take a breather for a second. Took his eye off, and he knew he had Obiagu. He was going to be able to isolate him in Queens. Finale of the regular season of the Big East winner gets a bye in the first round of the Big East tournament. Champagne against the double team. Offensive foul. This is how Mike Anderson wants to build this roster. Not just Brooklyn guys, but from across New York. Golden with a steal. That tri-state area is ripe with talent. Butler 0 for 6 from outside. Oh, Champagne knocked away. Good hands, Thompson. Back comes Harris. Chuck Harris off the glass. Five minutes ago, there have been five lead changes since. Inside 10 to shoot. Big East leading score. Champagne has it stolen by Thompson, who dribbled it on the baseline, and it's right back to St. John. Rasheem Dunn with a quick first step, then he's cut off, bounce into the tightest of windows to find Champagne, who lost it in a bounce over to Butler. Sit out. Now Champagne. Five in the shot clock. Champagne hops into the lane. It's ripped away. Seconds. Chicago zone, Charlie Moore delivering here in the Big Apple. And a traveling call on Champagne. It's the ninth Johnny's turnover. Well, Weems is committing himself to. Champagne cuts, rises. No, they wave it off. Offensive foul on Julian Champagne. My guess is I didn't. Paul was supposed to play DePaul, but the Blue Demons, the Huskies, along with Butler, are all on pauses due to COVID-19. For bundling made easy, go to Geico.com. Well, I don't know you come into the season thinking that Ike Obiagu is. Oh, and it rolls off. Watch for the delay again. Champagne. That was and he He made a good decision there, you know, in this weave to get everybody's bodies moving so nobody's really stagnant. Champagne lost it. Here comes Thompson. Nice work there. Maybe you say, listen, the St. John's going to beat us taking those shots the whole game? That's the question you have to ask yourself. 
There's another turnover for St. John's. Into the open floor goes Tink. Oh, is that right? Yeah. How much you pay for it? I don't remember. <laughs> Champagne shot clock is under 10. And an offensive foul is called. It's kind of interesting. Zone is, again, for St. John's to stand around a little bit more, not use their athleticism as much. There's the turnover force. Good hands by Griffin. A little bit of danger. Garcia on him. Yeah, they're switching those outside screens, too. Champagne. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. Offensive. Well, he did the right. It was coming. <laughs> when he runs behind an offensive player who's got the ball in transition, it's going to be a flip back triple. And a steal. How about Canfield? Real quick hands. Pokes it away from Champagne. Three. <laughs> you know <laughs> Peggy. You're right. <laughs> Some guys think it's a license to jack one up if you get a rebound. Teen at the break. Back within seven. Trying to make it back-to-back -back wins after beating Marquette on Saturday. And it's another steal. Bounce pass. Sell name. The game. St. John's looking to make it three straight wins. And there are a lot of people who can drive it here like this guy. They're going to call an offensive foul. Another one. It's Romeo Weens who draws the charge. Third straight win. Mike Anderson told us it just feels like we're playing a much better brand of defense lately. Although there's a careless pass. And McCauley gets it back to a nine-point game. Make a three-point shot, so he's really struggling from that three-point line. Champetti, good defense. Robinson Earl got a hand on it. Gillespie trying to get on track and dunk. Champetti still with just two points tonight, and he's called for an offensive foul. Good defense by Robinson Earl that time. Moving him that can take the ball out of Duke's hands and let Duke play off the ball and be more aggressive offensively. And a turnover as Jim Penny said he wanted that ball in the air. It came to him down by his knees. But well, the one mistake Dante Harris has made, the one-handed, left-handed pass turn, turns the ball over. And unless your hands are the size of Michael Jordan's or... Taken away by Georgetown on the steal. Here's Blair. He lost it. And that will not count. That's the play in regulation. Berger again. And the Johnny's just lose it out of bounds. A little miscommunication with Champagny and Dunn. And it's... It looked like it went off of St. John's. It did. Georgetown will get it back. Good ball movement. Put in the ball. Get the ball to Champagne. Tried to dump it down. Threw it out of bounds. That was just the fifth turnover for St. Mark Jackson. I remember St. John's family, of course. That is travel, a turnover. Tied at five here in the earth. Down the rebound. And then it's knocked away, and here comes Posh Alexander. Toss up ahead, Champagny trying to gather it out of bounds. And Terry Weimer says... Still keeping St. John's on the perimeter. Champagny bounces it off his leg. Turnover forced by Denzel Mahoney. I say this, Blue Jays continue to do... We're seeing now, just because shots aren't falling. It's a lot about defense, a lot about the little things. That pass by Champagne picked off by Carey. Offensive versatility, long and athletic, very good at facing up and driving down the paint. And now a steal by Juan Felix Rodriguez, who had 21 on Friday and gives it away. A steal by Champagne. Champagne is altered there by Policelli, and it'll go back to the Seawolves. We're talking to Coach Anderson before the all five guys. And now Palacelli, three straight triple looks, but the Seawolves couldn't catch in, although they get it right back. And that's just a careless decision by Champagne. There was no way to. McKenzie with a deflection in the takeaway. Oh, Williams 
got back on defense and kept breathing. About 40 minutes of hell, right? That's where this all came from. Mike Anderson under Dolan Richardson. I'd say it's more like 40 minutes of fun. If you're St. John's, quite frankly, if you're St. John's, if you're us, uh, it's been go to the line, try to make this an eight-point game. Oh, and this is where if you're St. John's, you have to say, all right, guys, we still want to attack this pressure. If they're going to pick up full court, it doesn't mean that we just... And a foul is called with 24.9 to go. But that's kind of... I, I like looking at the backcourt saying, guys, we want to run and jump. We want to trap if we can. Out of the trap if we can get a steal. We don't want to foul in the trap. I've Here come the Wolverines again. They've got a four on two. And Penny defending that from Neal. Had a chance to compliment each other in the backcourt. And then Cole can hit. Roberts is holding his mouth. Amac was denied. Rejected away by Champagny. Cole shot blocked by Champagny. Sonogo has it with five on the shot. Here's Cole. They get it to Adams, blocked by Shan Penny. And the Red Storm makes winning choices or decisions when it comes to the offensive end of the floor. If Williams set an open look at three, couldn't hit. Here's Enzi, contested at the rim by Shan Penny. Second try, he scores with the foul. Johnny's are going to swipe at it, dig up at it. Enzi, size advantage, takes advantage and then gets blocked. Tate follows it up. Miles Tate didn't play over the first street close with a sprained right thumb. Duke all the way, swatted by Roberts right to Horkler, and his putback won't go. And then we have a win. three steals in this game. They averaged 12, over 12 steals a game. Reynolds didn't settle, found Mamu Kalashvili and Champagny with the defensive spurt. Again, it's into the not a good three-point shooter and they, they've kind of given the keys to posh alexander which you can understand he's a new york kid on top of that's a great pass and another good block yes. yeah they had a couple of drives to the basket then seaton all stop closes up the lane again and then st john struggles to score nobody cut baseline blocked out of there champagne on the defensive end man he is good luck enzy again but he'll go to the line and yeah, that first catch by Enzi he was just a touch nice recovery there out front Enzi got it back and rejected at the rim by Champagny he said not in my house that was Williams not that excuse me Scruggs has it blocked away that's eight blocks Carter's putback is partially blocked Theo John asking for it in the post. Works down the jump hook. No good. There's Garcia. His shot is blocked. Credibility. <laughs> it's one of the best kinds of credibility you can have in basketball. Dump down. Bishop walked away. Nice defense by Champagny. St. John's down a pair. Just getting started. Seven foot disrupting shots around the rim. Just a freshman. And Jefferson is fouled. St. John's a sizzling 54% from the field. Moore got the shot rejected. It was Erlington who blocked it. And Johnny's. Samuels defended by Champagny, and Champagny got a hand on it. Champagny does so much, including block shots. He's eighth in the. They're getting close to a lot of steals now, St. John's also. Robinson Earl blocked by Champagny. Three on one for St. John's. Alexander to Champ. The two stars, if you will, Champagny and Gillespie, neither one has got it going tonight, although Champagny wow. with the block defensively. St. John's. But they haven't been able to finish all those. Exactly. Just a lot of shots in traffic that weren't easy, but you got to make them. Champagny with the block. Erlington wanted the lead out. Didn't run. That's a great play out of the timeout. St. John's has been getting a lot of looks at the basket on second chance points. 
Anderson Jr. blocks Champagne with his second on a jump shot. He's great, but he's pretty darn good. Kept his composure, found Bladen, and Murray's got the offensive rebound. Couldn't finish Champagne. He's back to the Red Storm and Dorm in their Shiatsu massage defense. That's open. It was not called. Champagne coming flying in. And wins it in overtime. I gotta be honest. I know it's down the middle of the coaches I talked to. They foul all day long. This is <laughs> prominent to sports in it. Good feel of instincts for the game, where to move on the court. You know, he reminds me of a guard version of Moses Malone. You don't want him to feel you. Because he can, he hurts you on the, let's see, John Gaffney with the call, keep it right here. But it looks like he did, he did grab, grab the arm on that reach. Champagne with the rejection. Frank Williams lost the basketball. He came up with it. Two on one for the Sea Wolves. Champagne stepped up, though, with the rejection on Green. Use of the pivot foot. That was pretty by Kobe McEwen. A move in classic pick and pop guy. Long steps out for one. Gotta give it to these young men, all they've gone through to get to this point. Too much dribbling that time. 2003. So it's been a long, long time since we've seen someone affect the game defensively like Obi Austin. There's Mamu. Mamu! By Champagne. It would be over 500 in this season in the Big East is a big milestone for this program. 15 foot jump shot. What does Seton all have to do here? Their offense, they have, they have lost it a little bit. Reynolds wants the screen. It's going to nowhere. Tough shot. Any got it to Jordan addressed at halftime is. Not giving up the layups, the point blank shots, the easy drives. Nice two man game. Shot clock turned off in a two point game. Hodges back the other way. Can't hit. Rebound early. Going over a trainer working on him. We were right there. We certainly wish him a speedy recovery. Duke for three is good with a sprained right thumb. Duke all the way, swatted by Roberts, right to hook. Part of the St. John's offense, you must, St. John's must turn you over to play their style of play. Nobody stopped, the mom will kill us, really. All Take perimeter shots, no dribble penetration, that is the key. And the other thing that happens is then you don't foul either. Wilson on the... I'll be honest with you, I don't know this guy's sneakers, so I don't know, maybe he did. I mean, that's some... And this guy's play... So he's slow to get back into his game. But really dynamic in both ends with his quickness. There's the trap. And here comes the action on the break. He has not shot the ball well from three-point line for the season so far. Yeah, they expected that he was going to redshirt this year, but pretty much everybody, excuse me. Scruggs has it blocked away. He's in there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And then wide left. Garton. Wrong with that. Gotta love the shot credibility. <laughs> it's one of the best kinds of credibility you can have in basketball. Dump down. Bishop blocked away. Nice defense by Shan. Disrupting shots around the rim. Just a freshman. And Jefferson is fouled. In the Twins. More for two. Really good switch. Now they've got partners playing way outside the scoring area. They get a paint touch, lose the basketball. Great defense by St. John's. Duke's got the ball up high. Skip pass. Breed. That's the way you want to start the half. Harris. He's going to have to put it up. And he throws up a wild shot. Finishing right now. Obi Johnson couldn't handle the fast pass. 
Ice water in his veins, cold. Powell got stuck. Champagne got the steal. Henderson. Red Storm in their Shiatsu massage defense. That's open. That's a good point guard. Good point guard, preseason conference player of the year. He's a layup, nice speed. And this is where we see things for the game, where to move on the court. You know, he reminds he's a guard version of Moses Malone. You don't want him to feel you. Because he can, he hurts you. Shot and rebound and then control tempo by pushing it up the court. Seawolves without a field goal in the last three and a half minutes. Got a lot of good years on this campus. On Felix Rodriguez off sales with the extra a chance at the steal. There's plenty of time left. So so even if it's a trap, maybe the pass out. I think you just use the backcourt. Knocked away. A steal for St. John's and a run out chance. Bigger than one through this past couple of weeks playing through the injuries to Baldwin and Thompson. Trying to get hot again in March. Bay, straight away, Jay. Uh, how deep is that? Make you guard a little bit longer. The last beat. Crossover dribble. Woo! Where'd he get that? You took over 11 oh, years ago. Second. You're saying there's more talent than when they had DeAndre Agent? I, I'm talking about combined. If you look at all the freshmen, his family okay, drops well. it in. And the numbers again, five on four. Nice recovery by Doug. Now Bay a three. Down a bit. Time on their side, 237 and counting. More high step into the hole. Tough match. Tough pass, and Watson could not handle it. Turned over by Duke. Powell and McKnight, the five on the floor. The shot clock down to five again. McKnight off the window. White steps into a three on the shot clock. Anderson. High screen. He'll pull. In and out. Anderson, the drive. High off the glass. No, the follow. Action. Facts are big picture. Long term. Inside. Laid up and in. The, the hands of house gonna have to do, uh, watch the run and jump here from St. John's. Nice move by house through a double team. More inside, back out Swatter. Just inside the line. And the. Slater to Robinson Earl. Two. They have sound played that angle. St. John's has had some breaks in its schedule this year in what's been a crazy year, as we all know. But. Lafayette Christian. Coach Mike Anderson says that Greg is the heart and soul win oh, yeah. of his team. Billy again. Hale gets the long rebound. A one-man fast break. Roden is up against the clock now. We'll have to put it up. No, he looked inside and turned it over. Third. Now gets Villanova. Champagne. How about the job Posh has done to maintain himself and not pick up that fourth or fifth foul? Oh, great work, Chip. 44 all here. Aiken looking to take advantage of a matchup. Going all the way strong. Can't finish. Tipped up no good. Samuel again. He's got it. Not that vocal go get it leader. And I do think in times when you struggle, you miss that voice. Oh. Roden missed a gimme in this St. John's run of late. Six consecutive wins, seven of their last day. Tops into the rim with a nice reverse. Uh, Baron Davis or Watson were outstanding. Dominic Pointer at St. John's, but Posh Alexander is unique. Uh, here he is. Inside Enzi with a drop step. And 
and then banks it in. Get the wheelbarrow. A lot of hardware. Harris with the shot clock winding down. Penetrates. Feeds. Can't get the roll. Jeff Penny makes winning choices or decisions when it comes to the offensive end of the floor. If Williams set an open look at three, couldn't hit. Here's Enzi, contested at the rim by Champagny. Second try, he scores with the foul. Okay, no more. No dunks, no layups, no end ones. Put him at the free throw line if we have to, but don't concede the open line. Another assist for Thompson. This one to Brace. To the bonus, to the one and one, which can play a factor late here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Enzi with an aggressive move, and Enzi... Accelerates and has it knocked away. It can lead to this five-point advantage early on in the second half. Bryce Enzi goes back to work. He got away with a travel, perhaps, and then got five. Tate. Hodges has been feeling it. Whips it for Tate. He rises. Understanding. Uh, you got to hang in, which this Bulldog team does. Thompson aggressively inside, and he'll go to the line for two. Yes. Nice little jump hook. At point blank range. Thompson goes baseline, gets by the defender and reverses it in tonight. And he picks his spots when to impose his will, his gifts on a game. Hodges is short. Back and forth down the stretch of Hinkle Fieldhouse. Tate goes by Dunn. Hops into the lane. Floater's there. Gonna swipe at it, dig up at it. Enzi, size advantage, takes advantage and then gets blocked. Tate follows it up. My corner, it's Thompson. Size advantage on Alexander. Aaron Thompson with four, splitting the D to tie it. But DePaul has been solid in taking care of the basketball. Lopez, the sophomore with six. Hello. This is David Jones with the basketball. Freshman four-star recruit. Able to enroll at DePaul for the St. John's, you see, first four out. They have a combined five quad one, quad two wins as Moore's off here. It's a shot. Third inside, Hall tried to back his way by Cole. Got it back. Well defended by DePaul. Hall with numbers. Moore off the shot, fake into Hall. Hall kept his balance enough to lay it in. As you said, a little over a second difference between shot and game. Jones skying and finishing. Moore all the way. Charlie Moore with 20. Especially game. You need a stop. DePaul, on the other hand. Didn't need a shot there, but Weems got fouled in the process. Times this year. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good pass into the post area. Watson doesn't get the bounce. Duke, oh, gets Champagny up, and Duke hits. Forkler in the corner. Watson's man slips. Watson is able to break free. Counted in the foul. Trading off the dribble a little bit. Another offensive rebound for Robinson Earl, and a nice handoff to Gillespie. They're getting close to a lot of steals now, St. John's also. Robinson Earl blocked by Champagny. Go, Robinson Earl's eighth offensive rebound. And here is Daniels, who's fouled. Providence got a really good
Use of the pivot foot. That was pretty by Kobe McEwen. Down inside, McEwen using that pivot foot again, but had nowhere to go. Shot clock at two. Leaner in and out. Get to Cartney. You got to let him continue to be aggressive. Here he is. Splits the defenders. Blocking foul. But that's that agreement. And this is a good sign for St. John's for him to get going and see the ball go through the net. Nice little pull up. Cole can't get into goal. 10 on the shot clock for Cole. Evan Cole inside off the window. Wolverine's coaching staff. Yeah. TJ Cleveland also is not local, but has really adapted to the New York City area and done a really good job of recruiting. Keep the play. Samuels, oh, great move. He's been on a tear, Steve Lapp. Samuels gets Champagny in the air, drives in, and he's fouled. And a little extra. Here's Swatter on the drive. Shot fake and score. Rolls looks for help. Rogan with a little dump down. They play a two-man game. Mambo off the back iron. NBA career would have been incredible. Maybe in a Hall of Fame career. Yeah. Rogan with show and go. Beautiful. He is that classic scorer around a, a group of guys that are scrambling around, giving them better looks because of turnovers they create. Right. Kale. Oh, a little hitch in his giddy up. Obi Paul. That's who. Obiaku again gets it out to Mama. Oh, get it. 2003. So it's been a long, long time since we've seen someone affect the game defensively like Obiaku. There's Mamu. Mamu. Martin drives, Haynes lost it. Cole shot blocked by Champagny. Now by the Red Storm. Here's Adams. Short. Follow good. I like the fact that Butler is exploring opportunities in their early offense. Uh, there's another aggressive. St. John's didn't check down on the free throw box out. Baseline drive, Hodges, and he's headed back. They're going to swipe at it, dig up at it. Enzi, size advantage, takes advantage, and then gets blocked. Tate follows it up. Shot clock turned off in a two-point game. Hodges back the other way. Can't hit. Rebound early. With a sprain right thumb. Duke all the way, swatted by Roberts, right to hook. Duke, good defense by McGriff. Duke on the floor, Duke, and he lost it. And Champagny tried to give it right. Part of the St. John's offense, you must, St. John's must turn you over to play their style of play. Nobody stopped, Amamu Kelashvili all. Big perimeter shots, no dribble penetration, that is the key. And the other thing that happens is then you don't foul either. Bolson on the heels were inside the three-point line. They're protecting the lane and forcing St. John's to shoot those types of shots. Nobody got in his way, and Mamu Kelashvili to the free-throw line. The drives to the basket, then Seton all stop, closes up the lane again, and then St. John struggles to score. Nobody cut baseline, blocked out of there. Going second half. St. John's on multiple occasions has climbed back into this game. Mamu Kelashvili got around Toro. To get in front of Mamu Kelashvili, giving up seven inches and down to five on the shot clock. Molson behind the back on the drive. And to call Molson. Go John McGriff checks in for St. John's. To the corner for Nate Johnson, his runner, blocked by the bottom of the... He has not shot the ball well from three-point line for the season so far. Yeah, they expected that he was going to redshirt this year, but pretty much everything, excuse me. Scruggs has it blocked away. Here's Garcia again. 
And rejected by Roberts. Want to get a good disrupting shots around the rim. Just a freshman. And Jefferson is fouled. Offensive rebounding. He's had a great start in that area. Freeman Liberty. St. John's a sizzling 54% from the field. Moore got the shot rejected. That's what happens when you've got talent, though. You can defend it for a while, but it always rises to the second year. His program's on a real high. That win on Wednesday against Villanova was a game changer. Yes. He three of the night in St. John's with the bailout three to stay up 11 points. You'd be absolutely right. Kobe Jones, there's just something about... Carey for Pickett, who goes inside and a, and a big slam. Pickett. Trying to slide inside, goes up to the shot, had it blocked. Pretty darn good. Kept his composure, found Bladen, and Murray's got the offensive rebound. Couldn't finish it. Can go out of team. Seven points for him, he's making Zagorowski. Work Jefferson, nice pump fake, gets inside, goes hard, and takes a hard foul, too. Mitchell probing, big men have had their way. Here's a mismatch. Cross court, Jefferson, blow by, layup, count it. 60 like Creighton player, you got to go back to the Willis Reed coach, Blue Jays. Back in the 85, Benoit Benjamin. for the game, where to move on the court. You know, he reminds he's a guard version of Moses Malone. You don't want him to feel you. Because he can, he hurts you. Just with Patrick Ewan. He's got so many new faces. Nine new faces as he tries to acclimate, guys. Going for, get his big man. They're guarding the ball now. 44 steals now on the season. Such a disruptive force. Garcia. Okay. This is the guy you said that needs to get going earlier in games. DJ Carton, who averages 12.2 a contest. Here he feeds to the corner. Kane missed.
10 on the shot clock for Cole. Evan Cole inside, off the window. Wolverine. The play. Samuels, oh, great move. He's been on a tear, Steve Lapp. Samuels gets Champagny in the air, drives in, and he's fouled. And a little extra. Here we go one more time from deep. St. John's didn't check down on the free throw box out. Baseline drive Hodges, and he's headed back to the conference. He's the second leading free throw shooter. Top 10 in field goal percentage. Champagny comes up for the steal. He's two of seven shooting from deep this year. Two great fake, and he buries it from the free throw line. Every single game, even if you didn't notice it. His twin brother, Justin, not too bad either. Second in the ACC in school. Going second half. St. John's on multiple occasions has climbed back into this game. Mamu Kelashvili got around Toro. To get in front of Mamu Kelashvili, giving up seven inches and down to five on the shot clock. Molson behind the back on the drive. It's a Cole Molson. I thought Kalkbrenner let Erlington off the hook. Off balance, Mahoney gets the benefit. Now four of 15 from deep, just 27%. There he is. On the pull up? No. Number two against number two. Gillespie on Champagny. Gillespie. And he still can't find the touch. An easy putback.
Off the back iron. Missed the jam. KO for three. And Sam Penny hauls it down. KO too strong. Trying to use the window there, and it's all down by Sam Penny. A nice little isolation play that time. Those team is battling at it right there. And of course, my mood to take a tougher shot. Roden off the curl. That one, Roden coming off that curl, couldn't get his feet up underneath him. That's right, getting good. Now here, Long looking into Erlington's face, sizing him up. Going reversal, can't get it to go. Champagne clear. A three point game. Clearly going to milk the clock for that possession. Not too soon, soon on that one, Timmy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Molson was looking at the off pit road. He just lost the race on that restart. Almendinger put it to him on that inside lane and drove away. Good luck to you both tomorrow. We'll see you with race day starting here on FS1 at 2 p.m. Eastern time. What a day it was. A.J. Allmendinger, a winner. And in the season, we get to see it all. Here's Aiken in traffic. Reynolds left wide open the base by Miss McKinney. And Champagne's got the rebound. Erlington, we do that backdoor cut, so you got Mamu inside, or you can get this three. But that was a little quick. You know, in their offensive set, they could have gotten that. With 10 seconds underneath the shot, right? So 14, 13, 14. Smooth yeah. 20. <laughs> 20, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> quietly. Well, I mean, that's what I'm just now. But he set the tone early with that steal coming out of halftime. The Red Storm went on a big run, 20 to 3, to put it away. Bree doesn't get the bounce, and the rebound to Champagne. This Providence team has not played defense the way and he said of all the years anything is possible at the Big East tournament You're gonna have to bring your own energy and get lucky and any and we've seen it Steve we called Butler Villanova on Sunday. That's a perfect ex Duke steps into a three not even close Bynum will shoot it. And the easy rebound, Champagne, and here they come. On the attack. Breed all the way. No, Watson couldn't get a handle on the rebound, and Champagne leads the break. Williams, nice. Providence has only turned it over three times, and zero turnovers in the last eight and a half minutes. They've done a great job against this St. John's pressure. If St. John's team, it makes David Duke better. Plus, he had 10 points himself against Xavier the other day, so he definitely makes a difference, and he doesn't turn the ball over. Assist to turnover ratio of three. Went to the basket before he had it in his hands. He was thinking about the dunk and lost it. There's a block by Adai Wusu. Bounce one to Watson, tough pass, Bynum gets it back. Shot clock at three. Reeves, 4-3, no. Reeves and Horkler have had, have had some wide open three-point shots. Can't knock them down. Runs. Jump shooting, not his strength, but tonight he's done a great job. 17 for Dunn, that matches his season high. Big East leading scores, Nick told you. Almost 20 a game for Champagny. There defensively, Vince Cole getting a hand in the cookie jar. Posh Alexander inside off the... Nice job by Cole hustling back. He made Champagny kind of be off balance. Now Vince Cole forcing that steal. Two steals and as many possessions for the Red Storm. Great play by Champagny for the steal. Alexander to Adaiwusu on the attack, and he traveled. You gotta give it to these young men, all they've gone through to get to this point. 
Too much dribbling that time. And another turnover for Reynolds Jr. It's how he's Martin has those hands low. And let that thing go when you see that. Adams stolen by Champigny. They got number three on one. And Champigny. Oh, the block. To be able to be on 500 in this season in the Big East is a big milestone for this program. There is Champagne in the conference. That's what you do. Eventually got a scholarship, so kind of going back to his roots on that one. Mama Keller's really big first half. Lost it going up and is controlled by Champagne and St. John. With some number. Gunn hesitates. It is Greg Williams, the high man for St. John's with nine. Comes the pressure. Champagne has the steal. And one! Player in the family now. Well, he's smart. Take care, of, take care of mama now. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> he said his he said his father was smart. He, his IQ in basketball was very good. But mom was the one that could play. Oh yeah. He is the leading scorer in the conference. He's the second leading free throw shooter. Top ten in field goal percentage. Champagne comes up with a steal. Ahead to Rasheem Dunn, who is able to squeeze it past the blind off. It's a rebound. Great hustle by Moore. Champagne with the deflection. Three on two here. Let's see if they can get something. Adai will suit white. Well, we can expect St. John's to play mostly man to man. They will sprinkle some zone in, and everybody knows about their great pressure. Early turnover committed by A.J. Reeves. And in the first game, even though Providence got a big jam against Villanova, and that one looks good as well as the lead is down to five. And then Champagny the steal. Little lackadaisical pass by David Duke that time. Williams for. Duke, good defense by McGriff. Duke on the floor. Duke, and he lost it. And Champagny tried to give it right back. Dunn has it. Dunn to a cutting of Dai Wood. Out there for Roden, the extra pass from Olsen. Almost lost it. Inside of 10 on the shot clock. Too many passes, and Champagny has the steal. On the break, and the pull. Because of concussion, so he's slow to get back into his game. But really dynamic in ball fans with his quickness. There's the trap. Here comes the action on the break. Euro step, step. And it, it's interesting with no fans how you can hear if it's Mike Anderson encouraging his guys. Threw it up for Enzi, but it hit the rim. Good recovery, though. Defense. He was a great player at Ohio. He was really good at Ohio. They go inside the free mantle, and he's double teamed, lost the basketball. He's really struggled all night. This second half, St. John's had eight in the first half. In the second half, another eight already. Champagny shot rejected. Theo John in the post, working on Roberts. Let's see if Roberts stays up. Oh, turns, stripped by Champagny. Beautiful weak side help on the double. Alexander. Hangs and hits. And a great difficulty about a 9.8 on a 10 point scale. And a steal in transition. Champagne gets it back for St. John's. A little bit for the, the St. John's Red Storm. Got out rebounded the other day against Xavier. Got out rebounded by 18 in the first matchup against the Creighton Blue Jays. And they've given up a lot of loose ball. Second throws when he gets there. There aren't too many holes in his offensive repertoire. Elite free throw shooter. Poked away, Champagny gets credit for the steal. A little bit. Now they've got partners playing way outside the scoring area. They get a paint touch, lose the basketball. Great defense by St. John's. Greg Gant has checked into the ball game for Providence. Done. And again, Hartler lost it. And again, St. John's can't capitalize. He knows how to find the seams in the low body of gravity, center of gravity, and that explosive, explosive step. Here he comes again off the Champagne steal, up ahead to Dunn. And an well, we know St. John's teams the last few years have just been really scrappy, and you see it right there. They're getting back defensively. Still, Mike Anderson trying to implement his system defensively and, and switch things. It's a nice luxury, but you also have to communicate. Murray, lane open up. 
Had a chance at the shot and gave it up. Turns into a turnover. Four on one for the Red Storm. Not finishing right now. Odimuro Johnson couldn't handle the fast pass. Alexander on the oh, break out, and they gotta go. Ice water in his veins, cold. Powell got stuck. Champagne got the steal. Henderson gets it right back. Mark Pope's got to be happy about is the fact that Alex Barcelo got into the swing of things and it doesn't point to that first half. There's a steal and immediately the other way. And, and wins it in overtime. I got to be honest. I know it's down the middle. The coaches I talked to, they foul all day long. This is <laughs> Providence is fortunate. Hard off the iron and back. Kim Mohoy is intercepted. Champagne, they got numbers. Had the right idea. A nice save by Sh Defensively, St. John's is trying to pressure and make it difficult for Stony Brook to play out of the high post. He gives it away. A steal by Champagne. Champagne. Had an open layup. St. John's falling asleep. Champagne. Long on that attempt, but wills his way back over to Alexander. Nice second effort by Champagne, staying with the play. And now game, Julian Champagne averaged 28. That was the most by any Johnny a year ago. Let alone a freshman point guard. Champagne with the swipe. The seventh, St. John Steele. A lot of confidence is gained if, if you're Boston College, win or lose. And clearly they still have a chance to win this game. Being down 20 and feeling at times like you're being run out of the gym.